In this video, we will dive into the initial setup of the ZackTrack system. This includes anchor placement, networking, setting up your access point, and the pucks. The anchors are hung around the area you want to track in. They should be hung asymmetrically. The more asymmetrical, the better, because this helps with the accuracy of the mathematical algorithm. The anchors should all be placed within a cube 30 meters or 90 feet aside. You can still use lights outside of that cube and track outside of it to some extent, but the anchors themselves need to be hung within those limits. When hanging your anchors, they need to be right side up. This means the ZackTrack logo on the front is legible. They can be hung rotated at any angle if that ZackTrack logo is parallel to the ground. Where they are hung in relationship to your lights is also important. If the anchors are too close to the lights, the signal might be interfered with, resulting in poor calibration or tracking. The best hanging placement is piped out away from the lights about two feet. The anchors need to be hung at least head height or higher around the perimeter of the stage. Putting them over the center of the stage can also throw off the calibration. Something else to keep in mind, especially with oddly shaped stages, is that trackers need to be in communication with at least three anchors, preferably four, at all times to maintain tracking. The primary thing that will disrupt communication between a tracker and the anchors is water. Since humans are 60% water, the ZackTrack signal cannot travel through us. As you are hanging your anchors, making sure there are some on all sides of where a person might travel is something to look out for. Once all the anchors are hung, Ethernet cables need to be run to them from the PoE switch. Once you see the blue LED on the anchors lit up, they are ready to go. ZackTrack networking consists of two sides, ZackNet and DMX protocols. The two DMX protocols currently supported by ZackTrack are ArtNet and SACN. The DMX protocol is for communicating between ZackTrack and the lights, and a lighting console if you choose to use one in your system. On the front of the server, you will see three IP addresses. One says light. This one is for ArtNet or SACN and comes out of the red Ethernet port. Another IP address is labeled ZackNet. This is the IP address we use to communicate with the yellow Ethernet port. The third says anchors. This is the IP address for the ZackTrack server to communicate with the anchors and also uses the yellow port. The two sides of our ZackTrack networking meet at the server in their respective ports. The yellow ZackNet port gets connected to the PoE switch and all the anchors, and the red light port gets connected to the DMX node and or console. The wireless access point or WAP can be configured to connect through either port. Typically, you will connect to the yellow ZackNet side. However, if you needed to use the same WAP and tablet for ZackTrack, and for example, your console remote, then you would want to configure it on the red side. The access point will need to be configured to work in the IP address range of the chosen port. You can find information about the WAP settings and configuration through this link. Connect your tablet to the WAP via the tablet's Wi-Fi settings. Once the Wi-Fi connection has been established, open the browser and type in the IP address of the server port you're connected to, the light for the red port and the ZACnet for the yellow. This will connect you to the server. This web browser is where you'll perform any software updates to the server and also where you can download the apps for the tablet. Once the apps are downloaded from the server, go ahead and install them on your tablet. After they're installed, open the ZackTrack app with the yellow icon. Then click on the plug icon in the top right corner. In this pop-up, you may already see your server available in the list. If not, manually type in the IP address of the server again using the IP address of the port you are connected to. Once it establishes the connection with the server, you will see a little plugged in icon. If you find you are having issues keeping your server and tablet connected, you may need to double check your WAP settings or your wireless range. The anchors are hung and wired and the tablet is connected to the server. The next piece of the setup puzzle is the DMX node. We will create a separate network coming out of the red port on the server into an unmanaged switch. Also plugged into that switch will be our DMX node. For this video, we're using a Grandame 3 node in SACN mode. If our WAP was connected to the red port, it would also be plugged into this switch. And the last thing plugged into this switch will be our console. Note that this is merely one possible setup out of many used to get DMX from ZackTrack to the lights. 
We will go more in depth on different variations later in this course. This will include ArtNet and SACN nodes, Hardline DMX, and routing different universes. The pucks are probably the most fun part of the whole setup because they are placed in seemingly arbitrary locations across the floor. There are some rules to how we use the pucks, but at the end of the day, they are essentially simple trackers used to put coordinate information into the ZackTrack software. The colors on the pucks identify them for different meanings in the software. Initially, we use them to determine the direction of the coordinate system the server will use. The black puck determines the origin. This doesn't mean it should be placed at the 000 location of your stage. It's just defining ZackTrack's virtual origin. Typically, you will place this somewhere downstage right. The red puck is how we define the x-axis. It is based on its relationship to the black puck. Typically, you will place the red puck somewhere down stage left to define stage right to stage left as the x-axis. The green puck defines the y-axis. It also works based on its relationship to the black puck. Place the green puck somewhere on stage right to define upstage to downstage as the y-axis. Blue is a bonus puck. It provides an additional calibration point for accuracy. It is usually placed upstage left. If your system has already used the pucks before, you simply turn them on and you are ready to calibrate. However, you may need to patch your pucks in first if you haven't done it in the past, or if you've received a replacement puck for some reason. This is done through system settings, then calibration settings. Once there, press select trackers. There is an EUI number on the bottom of each puck letting you know which one is which in the software. Select each of the pucks one at a time to define which puck is black, red, green, and blue. If you are unsure if you need to patch your pucks, look for a red warning at the top of the screen letting you know the pucks are not patched. When looking at the pucks, you will see a light flashing on top of it. It's telling you one of four things. First, if it is flashing green, it is connected to the network. Flashing blue is good and is letting you know the puck is working or calibrating. Solid Blue says there is no known Wi-Fi network and the puck has enabled its own Wi-Fi. If you would like more info on them enabling their own Wi-Fi, check out this link in the help manual. Lastly, you might see a white light. This is a warning something is wrong. Please contact your local distributor for support in that scenario. Now it's time to do one last walkthrough of your connections and placement, and then we can get calibrating.